Hello and what is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another update on the progress of my Endless Runner using Unity. We are close to finishing our first iteration of the development process and we are about to have a fully functioning prototype up and running. First, let's take a look at what we have accomplished so far before implementing this episode's changes. You see, we have basically the core mechanics of an Antis runner. We can run, we can jump and uh, the world gets respawned endlessly as we move through the level. And we also have a coin collecting system and a very very basic user interface. Now the last big feature left for this iteration is to add some enemies our player must avoid, as well as a simple AI and some mechanics to react when a player gets hit. If you want to stay updated on our Endless Runner, please consider subscribing and also drop your feedback and ideas in the comments. I pretty much appreciate it and will gladly implement any good ideas to let you get part of the game. Also, if you like this video, then leave me a like. So guys, with not much further to do, let's just hop straight into this week's implementation. First, I needed a model for our enemy, of course, so I quickly opened up Blender and started creating a simple low-poly model. We will have more enemy types and boss enemies as well, but we start with the first basic one and add additional enemy types later on. And yes, you probably already guessed it, it's freaking Corona itself. I also wrote a simple core plot. Our hero is basically on its mission to save its family and gather resources and information to help them stay alive while they're at their stay-at-home order. I don't want to spoil too much, but he might be able to find the true origin of the virus and probably will be able to fight it. But it will be very difficult, of course. For the base of the model, I used a simple UV sphere and randomly selected different faces, then inserted and extruded a couple of times and then added those weird testicles. I think it's fine for the start, so this will be our temporary model. Like every game element at this stage of the development process, it might get replaced and for sure it will be refactored at some point. But for now we're fine, so I exported the model as an FBX and I imported my Corona model into Unity. I quickly dragged it into the scene and adjusted its size to fit our game. I also created a prefab and quickly added a sphere collider. Now, I wanted to have a really disgusting and at the same time frightening virus look to it, so I created a new virus material and played around a little bit. I again used the tune shader and I think the key to it is that really virusy sick looking green we have here. And this is the result I came to after playing around a little bit. Let me know what you think guys. So I created a new script which will be our enemy spawner and the enemies will get spawned with the collectibles and they're using similar values at this point to calculate its position just to get it up and running quickly. Of course the chance of spawning an enemy will be much lower. I started with a 20% chance per 11 meters which basically is a quarter of our road prefab. We of course will have to tweak this value later on so that we can step up the difficulty as our player progresses through the level. So now let's test out if our spawning works properly. And it seems like our coronavirus gets spawned properly and I also feel like the quantity is okay for now, at least for the beginning stages of the level, but unfortunately it doesn't do that much yet, so I will take care of that next. First of all I need some sort of a simple pathfinding. So I created a new enemy AI script and for this I kept it really really simple guys. First I check if the player is inside a radius of about 50 meters, um, if so the enemy will take action and he will be moving towards the player. For the direction the enemy must move, I just calculate a simple vector 3 based on the difference of the player's and the enemy's position. The target position itself will not directly be the player position, but rather a little bit in front of him to take his movement into the consideration. In this very first prototype, the enemy will not be intelligent at all, it will be really really dumb. He will be basically not much more than another obstacle, which is moving towards the player instead of being static. And of course he's looking really disgusting. So let's quickly check out if our basic AI works as we intended and it does work properly. You see it's moving towards the player when he's in a radius of 50 meters. Again guys, this is just a simple first prototype, I will refactor the AI later and make it smarter and also more dangerous. Now that the virus can attack our player, we of course need some kind of a reaction when he actually hits him. So let's tackle that next. For that I just tagged our enemy and then used the onCollisionEnter method of our player to check if he's colliding with an object with the tag enemy. If our condition is true, I can decide how I react. 
I'm not quite sure right now if the game will be completely over when the player hits an enemy or if there's some sort of a health bar and he's just losing some health or gets staggered. I don't know, I will decide that later on. Maybe I will also add items or power-ups to the game which will affect the behavior of hitting enemies. But for now I guess we just restart the level which is like a game over. Guess I will think about that in the next iteration and maybe I will change the whole behavior. So guys, I think we are done so let's quickly check out if our collision works properly. I will now hit an enemy on purpose and see if it restarts our level. And it seems to be working fine on first try. And that's about it for the first iteration of our enemy implementation. Like we do in every episode, I now want to share a quick before and after compersion. And this is the game before the changes shown in today's episode. And these are our results. We successfully added an enemy with a very very basic enemy AI to the game. I have to admit that this was one of the more complex tasks we had to conquer so far because we had to create a model in Blender, we had to do spawning in an appropriate way and we also had to code a simple enemy AI which was completely new territory to me. For this stage of the development process I'm pretty happy on how it turned out and I think we are done with our first iteration. We have a playable prototype of all core elements of our endless runner. In the next weeks we will iterate through all the components of the game again, but in shorter cycles. In this way we will improve and refactor every element of the game and uh, with every iteration we will come one step closer to release. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, if so please leave me a like and consider subscribing to stay updated. Please also drop a comment and share your feedback and ideas. I pretty much appreciate any participation to help me building an enjoyable and fun game. I hope you stay healthy, take care, see you in the next video, bye bye.